Hi everyone, recently I've been working on a couple of films which are due to be screened in cinemas and I thought it might be useful to make a video to demonstrate the process of taking the surround mix you've done in Pro Tools and from that actually creating a video master and then finally creating a DCP file for playback in the cinema. Obviously on projects with a reasonable budget the sound team wouldn't be responsible for the creation of the DCP file but on smaller independent films you may well find yourself in a position where you need to do it yourself. This video, therefore, is aimed at anyone working on small features intended for cinema who wish to get an overview of the whole process. It's not supposed to be representative of what might happen on a major movie release from a large studio. We're going to take a look at two possible workflows in this video. The first assumes that you don't have the full quality video in Pro Tools, so it will involve going via Adobe Premiere with the audio. Later on towards the end, I'll briefly describe how, if you did have the full quality video in Pro Tools, you could skip the need to go via Premiere and just bounce to QuickTime and then go straight to the DCP encoding stage. Anyway, before we go any further, it's worth talking a little about what a DCP file actually is. Whilst this topic could no doubt fill an entire video in itself, the goal here is just to get an overview of the format and what you need to consider when working with it. So DCP stands for Digital Cinema Package, and it's basically a collection of digital files used to store and convey digital cinema audio, image and data streams. These files can be loaded onto a cinema server for playback. The essence data, and by that I mean the audio and video, is wrapped as MXF files. So that's how the files will appear if you take a look at them as you can see here. But within this MXF, the video is compressed using JPEG 2000 compression and the audio is just a wrapped 24-bit linear PCM file. So basically the audio is the exact same quality as the 24-bit mix you bounce out of Pro Tools. The DCP format supports both 48 and 96 kHz sample rates. The files you can see here are the DCP file I created for the film I've just finished working on, which is called Vote Deborah Gray. It's a film by Manchester-based director Paul McDonoghue, and I worked on the audio alongside Jasper, who did the majority of sound design, and Matt, who composed all of the music. I did the dialogue editing and a small amount of sound design and the final mix. Let's go back into the Pro Tools session and take a look at the process from mix down to the creation of the DCP file. I did the mix in 5.1 as it's a fairly universal format and I knew that it would be compatible with even the smaller cinemas. In this video, I'm not going to go into much detail about the actual process of mixing in surround. I'll probably save that for another video. For now, we'll go from the stage where we've got the finished mix in the session and we're about to mix it down. Usually, I set a session up like this so I can do an internal layback of the mix. Here you can see that I've got the routing set up so that I can have a 5.1 layback track and also a stereo down mix layback track, what you might call an LORO or left only right only mix. Basically, it's a stereo down mix which has no surround encoding. This is accomplished by routing the 5.1 mix through the Avid down mix plugin. And you can see here that I've actually chosen to ditch the LFE channel in this case, and uh, I've carefully set the levels. Anyway, I can cover this in detail in another video if you feel it would be of interest. Just let me know in the comments. One thing I will point out is that on this final Submaster Auxiliary, I've used a Waves LFE filter plugin. It's a low pass filter which, in this case, filters everything out above 120 Hz. It's a really steep roll off of um, 60 dB per octave, I think. The reason for having this filter is that when sending stuff to the LFE channel, low frequency effects, via the standard LFE send control, Pro Tools doesn't actually do any filtering of its own. So whilst you might only hear low frequencies because you're listening to the LFE channel through a subwoofer, all frequencies are actually present on that channel. So it's a very good idea to filter it yourself with a plugin such as this. Okay, so usually I'd actually do an internal layback, that's why that track's there, but for the purpose of this video, I'll just bounce this to disc. Even offline this may take a while, so I'll cut to the point where it's done. Right, I've got my mix down 5.1 file, and in the workflow I'm about to demonstrate, I'll take this into Adobe Premiere, sync it up with the full quality footage, and then export a master, ready for the subsequent creation of the digital cinema package. Here's the Adobe Premiere project for this movie. It's likely that a video editor may do this next step, but if you're doing the whole thing yourself, as I did for this project, you need to make sure you get the process right. I'll import the newly mixed down soundtrack. The next part is where I need to be careful. Currently, this timeline is stereo only and there are no 5.1 audio tracks. So I'm going to create a new sequence making sure that the attributes such as resolution and frame rate are correct for the project. 
Obviously, yours might be different to this example, but this particular project was shot at 23.976 frames per second and a resolution of 3840 by 2160, what you might call UHD. That's a standard 16 by 9 aspect. Ultimately though, it'll be letterboxed to something closer to a 2.39 to 1 scope image. I'm just going to finish putting in these audio settings. I think that's okay. So that's the sequence created. Next, I'll go back to the original sequence, select and copy everything, and then paste it into the new sequence. You can see that there are two tracks of black bars here. These were used for reference in the edit. I'll take these off for now and restore the cropped CinemaScope aspect when I actually create the DCP file. You can see in certain shots, such as this one, the stuff in the frame, like this shotgun mic, which obviously shouldn't be there, That'll be cropped off again later. So I can drop the 5.1 mix onto this 5.1 track. In Pro Tools, all 5.1 mix downs are in the standard film channel order, which is L, C, R, L, S, R, S, L, F, E. This is also the default way all of the buses and channels in I.O. setup are configured too. One of the problems with files that are in the film channel order is that cinemas don't actually use this. They use the SMPTE channel order, which is L, R, C, L, F, E, L, S, R, S. Now, there has been some discussion on certain online forums recently that Pro Tools might now be bouncing mixes in the SMPTE channel order. However, according to all of Avid's own current documentation, it's still in the film channel order of L, C, R, L, S, R, S, L, F, E. Anyway, as you'll see shortly, Adobe Premiere orders the channels correctly. So all I can say for sure is that Premiere correctly interprets the metadata within the 5.1 WAV and places the channels in the SMPTE order within Premiere. It's worth noting that how you have your I.O. setup configured with the root into your speakers has no effect on the channel order of the bounced files. Now that we've got the 5.1 mix on the timeline, I'll mute the stereo version and export a high quality master. For this project, I'll do it in Apple ProRes. I could also have used Avid DNX HR. Of course, I'll set the audio to be 5.1 and make sure that the channel order is the SMPTE standard, as you can see here. This will probably take some time, so once again, I'll skip to the point where this is already complete. Here's the exported file, and as you'd expect, it's pretty big. From this, I'll create the DCP. Before I do that though, at the start of this video, I mentioned that you might be able to skip past the Adobe Premiere stage. In order to do that, I would have had to have the full quality video in the Pro Tools session, and then just bounce to QuickTime, ensuring that I did the video bounce, same as source, and of course, included the 5.1 mix in 24-bit WAV quality. Either way, we've now got the high quality master and we're ready to actually create the digital cinema package file. The software I'll be using for this is free open source software and it's called DCP Omatic. Whilst you can download it for free, I would encourage you to donate to the developer if you find it useful. You have the option of doing this from the download page. Right, so I'll launch the software. I'm going to create a new project, give it a name. and then click on Add File and select the video file. There are two tabs at the top, Content and DCP. I know that this movie should be in a scope image format, so I'll set the container to DCI scope. You can see that this has squashed the aspect ratio at the moment, so I still need to recrop this, back to a letterboxed version. I'll sort this in a minute. This film, as I mentioned, was shot at 23.976 frames per second, but DCP doesn't support this, so I'll just have to conform it to 24 frames per second, which is obviously the nearest available frame rate. This will mean that it will run very slightly fast, but it's a tiny fraction of a percentage speed increase. And when I did some testing codes on a short section, I couldn't actually perceive the speed difference. I'm going to export this movie at 2K resolution. Whilst it was shot at what you might call UHD resolution, 3840 by 2160 which is close to 4K, the film is generally quite dark and there's not a massive amount of detail in the picture anyway, so I think 2K will be fine for this particular project. 
going back to the content screen, after quite extensive testing, I figured out that I need to crop the top and bottom by 256, and then set this option to no scale. Whilst it doesn't quite fit the full width of the Cinemascope image, the amount of cropping you see in this preview window is what the director signed off, so I'll go with that. I could stretch it out slightly to a 2.39 to 1 aspect, but I'd rather not distort the image like that, so the slight pillar boxing at the sides is fine for this feature. Finally, there's an audio tab here. This shows the various channels of the mix and how they're mapped. For Simpty mixes, like this one, the default is correct, as in one is left, two is right, and so on as you can see here. If for whatever reason you had audio which was in a different channel order, for example the film order, you could remap it here. So all I need to do now is actually create the DCP file by choosing Make DCP from the Jobs menu. Again, this takes a considerable amount of time, you know, we're talking a few hours, so I'll skip ahead. Here's the finished DCP with all of the associated files. Now I just need to drop this onto a drive and pass it onto the cinema for them to load onto the server. You might think that this would be simple, but I'm on a Mac and cinema servers only accept files from drives in NTFS, X3 or X4 formats. X3 and X4 are Linux file systems. If you're on a Mac, it's probably easier to go down the NTFS route. In order to be able to actually format and write to a drive in NTFS format, you'll need some additional software called Paragon NTFS for Mac. Once you've installed this, your Mac will have the ability to write to NTFS drives. Usually, you can only read data from them, but also, in Disk Utility, as you can see here, the Paragon software adds the option to format a drive in NTFS. So plug in a USB drive, format it, then drag all of these files, which form the digital cinema package, onto the drive. So that's it. I know that there are quite a few stages to this process, but I've done it a few times now and the files have worked fine when we've played them back in cinemas. As I mentioned, the information in this video is not supposed to represent the workflow for a major studio release, but rather provide the information you might need in order to get smaller films onto the cinema screen. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you again next time.